talked about Bill Chadwick and David Pearl, and we've talked about Stephen Stills, and we've talked about um, Chip Douglas. So it only makes sense now to talk about the people that were the most involved with the monkeys besides Chip Douglas, and that is Boyce and Hart. Now, Boyce and Hart are a duo. We've got Bobby Hart and Tommy Boyce. Um, they've been with the monkeys since they since the show was like being created and we're going to get into all that with like three things in this video the monkeys other successes and then dolan's jones boys and heart and maybe their later years because like because so um without further ado let's get into the video here we come walking down the street so, in late 1965, Tommy um, D D Boyce and Bobby Hart, <laughs> I have to say Boyce and Hart for now, they wrote, produced, and performed the soundtrack of the pilot for the Monkees, which you're hearing right now in the video and stuff, including singing lead vocals, which were later replaced once the show was cast, you know, once the pilot, you know, got greenlit or whatever. In 1966, despite some don some conflicts with Don Kirshner, who was the show's musical supervisor, they were retained in essentially the same role. It was Boyce and Hart who wrote, produced, and recorded, accompanied by their backing band, the Candy Store Profits, backing tracks for a large portion of the first season of The Monkees and the band's accompanying debut album. The Monkees themselves re-recorded over the vocals over Boyce and Hart's when it came to release, um, time to release the songs, including both the theme song and Lash Hannah Clarksville, the latter becoming a huge hit. Don Kirshner suddenly relieved the Boyce and Hart as producers by claiming they were using studio time booked for Monkey songs to record tracks for their own solo project. This is why all my homies hate Don Kirshner. All my homies hate Don Kirshner. <coughs> After their departure from the Monkees and the negative publicity that erupted when word got out that the band had not played their instruments on their early records, Boyce and Hart were unsure how the Monkees felt about them personally. Attending one of their concerts, though, the duo was spotted in the audience, and singer Davy Jones introduced them and in the, invited them on stage to introduce them. These are the fellows who wrote our great hits, <laughs> Tommy and Bobby. Every original Monkeys album, except for Head, Soundtrack, and the 1996 Justice album, included Boyce and Heart songs. So, that happened. And now we get into their other successes, which includes them being on Bewitch and I Dream of Genie. How crazy is that? We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. While Boyce and Hart were working with the Monkees, they embarked on a successful career as recording artists in their own right, releasing three albums on A&M Records. Test Patterns, I Wonder What She's Doing Tonight, and It's All Happening on the Inside, released in Canada as Which One's Boyce and Which One's Hart. That's a better album name, actually. The duo also had five charting singles. The most well-known of these was I Wonder What She's Doing Tonight, which reached number one in early 1968. It sold over one million copies and was awarded a gold disc. Out and About and Alice Li um, Long were the other top 40 hits. The duo also performed I'll Blow You a Kiss in the Wind on the television show Bewitched in one of several TV appearances that included guest spots on The Flying Nun and I Dream a Genie. All of these shows were produced by Screen Gems, which um, also control the monkeys, but you know. The television subsidiary of Columbia Pictures. Each of the three sitcom guest appearances featured their music, including two unreleased covers they performed on The Flying Nun. Bobby and Hart had filmed video promos for their songs Out and About and Alice Long. They were also involved in producing music for Columbia Pictures and Motion Pictures during the mid-late 1960s, including two Matt Helm movies, The Ambushers and Murderers Row, Winter A Go-Go, and Where Angels Go, Trouble Follows. They also provided the music score for a TV movie called Three's a Crowd, starring Larry Hagman and Jessica Walter. Boyce and Hart did promos for the U.S. Army Reserves and Coca-Cola. This included the creation of two Coca-Cola commercial jingles, one being a powerful psychedelic song, Wake Up Girl, while the other was their single, Smiling, with two totally, di with totally different song um, lyrics or whatever. In a 19... Okay, so... I'm talking too fast. I need to calm down now. In 1971, a sitcom named Getting Together appeared on ABC TV starring Bobby Sherman and Wes Stern as two struggling songwriters who were friends of the Partridge family and were introduced on their show in the last episode of the show's first season. The series was reportedly based loosely on Bobby and Hart's partnership. At this point, they decided to work on various solo projects. 
Hart co-wrote the 1974 Helly Ready hit Keep On Singing with Danny Jensen. J Jansen. 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 All right. Now that we've gotten into all that, let's go back to talking about the monkeys. And by the monkeys, I'm specifically mentioning two monkeys. And no, it's not my computer. They didn't really, they didn't really click. I'm talking about Mickey and Davey. Don't be alarmed that I changed camera angles. All right, don't don't be alarmed. Anyways, we're on to Dolan's Jones, Jones Boys and Heart. So, for those of you who don't know about Dolan's Jones Boys, such a tongue twister. But basically, Mickey, Davey, and then Boys and Heart all came together to make like a band. But really, they're just covering songs that like Boys and Heart wrote and that the Monkees did. So, um. This happened in the mid 1970s, so this is after Mike left, and it was just Davy and Peter, and they couldn't really use the monkey's name anymore. They were like legally prohibited from using the name and stuff, so they just called themselves Dolan jo Jones Boys and Heart, like after that and stuff like that. So after Davy and um, Mickey released the final monkey's album of that decade, Changes, they went on to perform with Boys and Heart and stuff like that, and they toured all over the country. And stuff like that. They also became the first American band to play in Thailand. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty cool. You see how cool the monkeys are? Alright, you, you all see how cool they are? Anyways, um, they signed to Capitol Records by Al Corey, and the group released an album of new material in 1976. A live album was also recorded in Japan, but it was not released to the US until the mid-1990s. It's a very long time. Tours coincided with the new syndication, with the syndication of the Monkees TV series, and helped boost sales um, of Arista's The Monkees Greatest Hits. They also had their own TV special called The Great Golden Hits of The Monkees Show, which appeared in syndication. It featured a melody of other Boys and Heart songs, as well as the songs they had produced for The Monkees. It didn't include any songs from their new albums, though. And um, as far as I know for Monkey stuff, they reunited during the 1980s when the resurgence of The Monkees happened again, and they performed live. So that was during the second Monkey Mania. And that's really all I have to say about Boys and Heart. So, what's the conclusion for this video? Are Boys and Heart monkeys? Um, for this, I'll have to say yes. Boys and Heart are like the fifth and sixth monkey because, you know, I mean, they're like two people. I don't count them as one person. They wouldn't be like fifth monkey, you know, blah, blah, blah. So... So far, Chip is the fifth monkey, also. So we have three guys so far that are, like, considered to be the fifth monkey. Um, I also want to point out that um, when I'm done with this series, I'll combine it into one big video in case you guys can't catch up. I understand there's a lot of these, and you probably won't be able to find them even if I link them in the description. So don't you worry, I will link these. I will not only link these in this video, but I will combine them into one big video so that you'll know all about fifth monkey shenanigans. So... The next fifth monkey thing we're talking about is either Andrew Sandoval or Coco Dolan. So, I'll see you all later. Generation.